Hallelujah. Good morning everyone and welcome to Covenant Light Breakthrough Hour. Wherever you are, go ahead, send out these links to as many people as you can. Then join me and let's worship God and celebrate Him and pray together. Hallelujah. Can never tell it goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty man bowed down with care. God gave his son Go ahead and worship him wherever you are His Father I honor you I worship you And pardon from He If we would think the ocean is filled and where the skies of parchment made were every star. Ascribed by, by trade to write the, the love of God. Of God above. Oh, hallelujah! Would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. The love of God, how rich and pure 
how measureless, how strong. Hallelujah. Go ahead wherever you are. Go ahead and worship him. Bless the Lord with all your heart. Once again, I remind you that Jesus, in teaching us how to pray, said, begin with the prayer of praise and thanksgiving and worship. He said, when you pray, start with our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So go ahead, wherever you are, worship God and bless him. It's not because God needs it to hear our prayer. It's not because God needs you to worship him so that he can get in the mood to bless you. No. It is because you need it. You and I need to remember who God is. We need to remember his power, his grace, his ability, his strength. And so that nothing we face looks bigger than God to us. So you come before God talking about who he is and his power and his grace and his mercy and remembering what he has already done for you and so that whatever you are about to ask him you can have faith for because you know that God is bigger than that thing go ahead right now and worship him take the moment to actually be grateful to God the more time you spend in worship the less time you need to spend in doubt and unbelief the more time you spend in worship the less time you spend in doubt and unbelief and the less time you need to spend begging and pleading because you know go ahead and worship him father we honor you i stand in awe and recognition of your necessity in my life and your leadership holy spirit i revere you pareno eclenum bregadier there is nothing better than being in your presence. There is nothing greater than having access to come boldly to the throne of grace, to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the hour of need. There is nothing more rewarding than hearing you speaking to you. There is not, nothing more comforting, Father, than knowing that you are on our side and knowing who you are Blessed be your holy name. I am here standing in honor and worship and reverence of you. Imperfect, I stand. Unworthy in myself, I stand. Embracing in totality the righteousness of Jesus. And made worthy and acceptable in your eyes because of Jesus. I celebrate you, sir. You made it all possible. You made it all possible. There's someone under the sound of my voice who is into IT. Into IT. Somebody who's going to be part of this or is part of this already. You are into IT. And God is, there's just a breakthrough happening for you. That's just what, so don't give up, don't quit yet. There's a break, just keep moving forward. You are, you, are, you are in line for a breakthrough. So you just take that with a loud amen and don't quit. Don't back down. There's a reason why the Holy Ghost is bringing this up. Because I said some decisions you were about to make. So just keep going forward. And don't quit. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost said, I will multiply to you what you seem to have lost. What you seem that you lost. I will multiply it to you. So don't go back, but go forward. That's the word of the Lord to you. Lift your hand, everyone. Worship him. Worship him. And I will create a new beginning for you. A new beginning. The past, the door is closed. That person, the Holy Ghost saying, I will create a new beginning. So just keep moving forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give him praise, somebody. Worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we give you praise and worship this morning. 
in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. You know, the next thing Jesus said to them in teaching them how to pray, said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Then the next thing was, Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth. And so, teaching us, like we said yesterday, to pray regularly when we come before God to begin our requests after recognizing who he is to begin our requests by praying about the kingdom of God and what God is doing Paul said I will that all men everywhere lift up pray lifting up holy hands for kings for those in authority pray for everyone and then for kings and for those in authority that we may live a quiet and peaceable life. And so it begins with praying for others, praying for what God is doing. So right now, if you are a leader in your local assembly, go ahead, pray for the people you lead. Call them by their name if you can. Or by their groups. If you are not a leader in your local assembly, you are a leader of souls to Jesus. So begin to pray for those right now who are in the spaces where you exist, where your light shines. Those who are in those spaces, pray for them right now, that they be saved and come into a knowledge of the truth. Claim them for the gospel. Claim them. Say, I claim so and so person. I claim so and so person for the gospel and for Jesus and for God. For the Father says, ask of me and I will give you the hidden for an inheritance. Command the enemy to take his hands off of their lives. Command the enemy to take his hands off their lives. And call for laborers to be sent to them. Jesus said, pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers. Pray for laborers, for them to encounter people they will listen to. People that will prepare their hearts for the gospel. Those are the three things you do. Claim them. Command the enemy to take his hands off of them and call for laborers. When you pray that way for anyone, you will find that person being drawn to God and brought to salvation eventually. Go ahead and do that right now. Father, we thank you. If you're a pastor or a leader or an apostle or a network leader of churches, pray for your churches. Pray for the people in those assemblies. Pray for the vision of that church. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Covenant Light Churches everywhere in, in Benin Republic, in Nigeria, in Kenya, and now in Uganda. I pray that your will be done. I pray that the message of your love, unconditional love, be spread all over. Let men come to a knowledge of the truth. Let men be saved. I pray that you will spread forth your light in all of these places I pray for the nations where covenant light exists that men and women, boys and girls will come in a mass to the knowledge of the truth and to salvation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray for laborers laborers I pray that you will send forth laborers into your harvest through Covenant Light Churches all over. Bring forth those who will serve and labor for the kingdom and for the gospel. Stir the hearts as you did those that were with Zerubbabel. For your word says that you stirred the hearts of those that were with Zerubbabel, that they rose up to do the work that was in the house. Stir up the hearts of every member of Covenant Light Church everywhere. That they will rise up to do the work that is in the house. In Ambroko Tozele Progodoshka, Rebo Sikala Bashantala Braye, Mako Pradiga Mosokora Braye, Makre Venondre Gezida La Brokoje, Makora Basantelia Bragamande, Elo Sikandele Progidos Korodia, Mali Broche Keraba, Makrava Dege Brogodosha, Le Kora Basantelia Bramande. Le Koraba Sida la Brogodosha, Remo Sikande le Brogodilia Makora Brahasha, Makabragabala Makozetega, 
Mako brege do sida la gabraya. Mako raba sida la gamosa kataya. Ekle nondre ge sida ba. Mekle nondre ge sida ba. Mako roboshke redia. Makre vedoso kora bahaske. Makra vanande ge sita liaba. Mako sita bakasada. Mako sita la bagasada. Mako roboshi karababa ba ye. Makro bobo roboshi kalabrahaya. Mekro nonde ge sela asto. Esto coste kil bracotes gelia, el glongre diga mosha, mangreve non se prodila mahaya, macreve non si gadala brahateke, le mondre gezidia, le mogorio bocora brahaya, me pronon de gesaliama. Multiply us, O God, in the name of Jesus, all over. Multiplication, I speak, multiplication, many more church plants that the light might spread forth in the name of Jesus. Mara pasata rapa gasekete repo koso koto robogo sikata rege dege dege de rege dege dege de raga daga bora kato zekele brogodo shikata reke de bogo ziga dalaga bayakata reke bo zika romo koso koto robogo sha reke kele brogodo sha Reke kere feto sopra gada bala mahaya. Ne kere vrege do shoko toro brogo do shakara bahaya. Ma sha 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 la gaba hase ketelia. In anamon sotora bahashe. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Give him praise for that. Give him praise for people coming to salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. This morning, we have some powerful prayers the Lord laid in my heart. In fact, as far as far back as yesterday, after the devotion and the, the time of prayer, the breakthrough hour yesterday, not long after, the Lord began to talk to me about this particular breakthrough hour. And the Lord told me that, that we, we are to pray. The Lord stared my heart. That we should pray about divine appointments. Divine appointments. When it's all said and done, the Bible says the race is not to the sweet, nor the battle to the strong, but time and chance happens to them all. That's really what it's about. Time and chance. God, God creates an opportunity and we embrace that opportunity and given time in that opportunity, maximizing it, things happen. And you find that it's not the one with the most skill or the one with the most connections, but those who received and maximized their chances and the times that were brought to them. Oh, hallelujah. Time and chance. So there is... A divine appointment when God said I know the plans I have towards you plans for good not for evil to give you a future and a hope the fact that he said I know the plans I have means that there are divine appointments God planned for Saul to meet with Samuel that was a divine appointment an ordinary Jew after an encounter with a prophet, became a king. Glory be to God. Because of a divine appointment. Child of God, I want you to know that the same way that God planned for Saul to meet with Samuel, Saul woke up that day and expected to go back to bed the same way he woke up. The same person he was when he woke up. But he didn't know that there was a divine appointment that day. When he was having his coffee in the morning, he didn't know that there was a divine appointment that day. When he took his bath, he didn't know that there was a divine appointment that day. When he stepped out to look for his father's missing animal, he didn't know that there was a divine appointment that day. But eventually, before he went back home, he had a divine appointment that culminated in him becoming the king of Israel. David encountered 
the same Samuel in a divine appointment. He went out that morning. He went about his business, went about the normal cause of his life as a shepherd looking after his father's sheep. But he came back home and met Samuel in his father's house. And Samuel said, it's not the firstborn son. Today is not his day. It's not the second born. It's not the third. It's not the fourth. But there is someone we are waiting for. You see, divine appointments, they usually wait for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. As I speak, I feel joy in my heart this morning. I feel joy, the joy of victory in my heart. Because someone under the sound of my voice, by the gift of faith operating in me right now, is experiencing a divine appointment. In the name of Jesus, this week you will have a divine appointment. This month you will have a divine appointment. Before this year is over, you will have several divine appointments. That you wake up thinking it's normal day, but it's the beginning of a new day for you. Eventually, David became king. I could go on and on and talk about all kinds of people that encountered divine appointments in the Bible. Because I want you to have faith and believe God this morning. The Bible says in Acts chapter 22 and verse 10. So I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, arise and go into Damascus. There you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do. So there is a there. There is a place. There is a place your feet must get to in that divine appointment. There is a place to be. There are people to meet. Hallelujah. And so Paul, in this case, arose and went to the place and he met Ananias. The Bible says in verse 12, Then a certain Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good testimony with all the Jews who dwelt there. You see, there is a there. There is a place. God told Paul, go to this place. Why? Because there is someone also that God has planted in that place. And there needs to be a divine encounter. There needs to be a divine appointment. And he said, that, that, that this Ananias came to me and he stood and said to me, Brother Saul, re receive your sight. And all of this began a new day, a new journey, a new beginning, a new sound, a new dawn for Paul. Somebody's new dawn begins Somebody shout amen. Somebody's new dawn starts. Hallelujah. Divine appointments. This is so strong in my spirit. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 17. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. There is a time. Acts chapter 1 and verse 7. Acts chapter 1 and verse 7. And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. You see, so the issue is not, is not knowing it. The issue is walking in it. It's experiencing it. The issue is not to know the times and the seasons. Okay, you wake up in the morning and you know you're going to meet this person. Or you have this revelation and this word of knowledge. Some of us like to boast in such things. But that's not the issue. The issue is encountering, experiencing, and maximizing those divine appointments. So Jesus said to them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power. That's why we pray. That's why we're going to be praying today. Because the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. You see, if I can unleash power, I will walk in my divine appointments, whether or not I know them. I will be led into them. I will be guided into them. I will think I'm just going to buy a butter at the supermarket, but that's the encounter with my spouse. I will think I'm just gaining admission to a university, but that's my encounter with my destiny. I will think I'm just traveling for a vacation, but that's my encounter with my destiny. Why? Because I have made power available. Because I have prayed. It is not for you to know the times and the seasons. It is for you to walk in power. It is for you to walk in power. 
It is for you to experience power. It is for you to live and dwell in the power of the Holy Spirit. And all these other things will begin to happen as it should. So today, we are going to make this power available. Wherever you are, this is the one prayer point. You must pray with everything inside of you. Lord, let my divine appointments begin to manifest. In fact, I want you to turn it around and not like you are talking to God. I want you to speak to your life and speak to your situations. And say in the name of Jesus, let my divine appointments begin to manifest. Let my divine appointments begin to manifest. Let my divine appointments begin to manifest. I feel an anointing of the Holy Spirit this morning. Go ahead and begin to pray. Say in the name of Jesus, let my divine appointments begin to manifest. The word let is a powerful word for a believer. The, power, the word let, Jesus used that word when he looked at the fig tree. He said, let no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. He was permitting and, and, and binding and losing with that word. He was deciding what's going to happen. When he spoke it, authority came forth. Let no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. So when you say let, that same word, let my divine appointments begin to manifest. You are standing as Jesus in front of a fig tree and you are decreeing what must happen. That's why the Bible says, he went until he that let it is taken out of the way. He that let it, he that lets. He, the Bible refers to the church as those who let, those who permit, those who disallow and allow. So right now, you are that person who lets. So you say in the name of Jesus, let my divine appointments begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. Unhindered, unrestrained, go ahead, pray it and begin to speak in tongues. I can tell a brogo do shekera bahaya. Makavre non de gese libra diga. O crodo bo shikara baye. Makrovo do so coro bohoske. Malia gere bo sikala brahaya. Megre non de ge brogo dis gabalia mahake. Mako toso prege de bo shakataya. Mali greve non de gesida. I speak over everyone under the sound of my voice. Let all that have been prepared for you. By God in his plans begin to show up now. Let everything prepared for you for this time and for this season begin to show up now. Make a brogedia. Let favorable, favorable, favorable times and chances begin to happen for you now. Under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Magevregedoso brogodia, ma livre non de shouted amen. In ma calebro do so cora baia, ma hashande legredia gabosa kataya. Make ne brodiza. Let the thing, the dream, the thing that God has planted in your heart, let it begin to walk out in your life. Let the thing, the dream that God has planted in your heart, let it begin to work out in your life. Let events come together. I speak by the faith of God in the name of Jesus. Let events come together. Let divinely orchestrated events begin to happen for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Igam broto gobo shekera bahaya. Masana gabora mashande. E credo skora pataka yakate. Le crege do bo zigalamande. Le mokora prategelia mande. Me ke vronon de gelia ma ako pra patege bosa. Pra patege li prodega. Ma crede non de. Let every tongue that is speaking out against you uh, to cause you to be overlooked. Uh, to cause you to be set aside in the name of Jesus Christ. Let that tongue be condemned in the name of Jesus. We condemn that tongue. I condemn it right now in the name of Jesus. I silence it. I say let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Let every one of them be silenced in the name of Jesus. But let the voice of promotion, let the voice to cause your lifting, let the voice to cause your recognition, let it begin to speak for you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I barrica bashataya. I crevenondre gesida bole creto bosca. Maca boyene monde riba. Ma crevenondre gesia. Me crenondre gesidia bora bagazetelia. Me crovenonde. Let that for which you have been sanctified. Let that for which you've been set apart. Let that for which you have been called into. In the name of Jesus. Let it begin to manifest. Let it begin to manifest. I come against that sense of purposelessness. I come against that sense of despair. I come against that sense of a lack of understanding of what life and what your life is about and what it's all what's going on. That sense of confusion about life. I don't know who I'm talking to, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command that confusion to cease by reason of events that will follow beginning this morning. In the name of Jesus, I decree that clarity is coming to you. That clarity of purpose is coming to you. That clarity of the plans are coming to you by divine appointments. That for which you've been set apart in the name of Jesus begin to come to pass in a monse protiga ake pro de gelia e pro no moskera dia malikre bodos gabradia ma creve non drege sila maya i candele broke toja me greve non dragaladisma me greve luz brogodia e che reto bos carana ma fredo gos contre geles contre gesuto praia kilien drege tuzo vri Brickly and ombre gazibra gadosha, pelos canandre gesita pia, male greve non so praia nande, ele nombre dia. I call for divinely appointed relationships in the name of Jesus to begin to manifest in your life. Every divinely appointed relationship for you in this season, begin to encounter them, begin to encounter them, and by the favor of God, let there be a connection, let there be a bonding. You will say, I don't know why, but this person just can't let me go. In the name of Jesus, they will say, I don't know why, but I just can't let you go. There is something about you. It's the favor of God. In the name of Jesus, by divine favor, let your divinely appointed relationships connect with you, hook up with you, hang out with you, stay with you, and be there with you. In the name of Jesus and fulfill its intended purpose in the name of Jesus. Make poriaba, make poriaba, make poriaba cura, make poriaba satelia, make poriaba gelecre dobosa, make pura pratege bolomonde ribaga, macreve no sapara mahaya, maya ya 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 kebora baha, macreve dosa. Somebody speak in tongues, somebody pray in the spirit. If you don't speak in tongues and you're born again, just say, Holy Spirit, I receive, I receive you. And God ahead and begin to speak in tongues. Make out those sounds. You see, that, that, that hindrance, that resistance from making out sounds that don't make sense is what is stopping you, not the Holy Spirit. So make out those sounds. Let loose your tongue. The Holy Ghost will take hold with you and you will begin to speak. So you just say, Holy Spirit, I receive you and open your mouth and begin to make out whatever sounds come to your mind and begin to speak. The Holy Ghost will take over with you. Mashani Gabora Mahaskere Debosha Remo Kora Brahaya Masana Galia Mahande Le Kora Badis Katalia in the name of Jesus Christ. Now we're going to pray. Now we're going to come against the enemy. Let every obstacle to my divine appointments give way. They have commanded the divine appointments to begin to happen. Now you are going to stand in the way of whatever wants to stand in the way of your divine appointments. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes prayer is dealing with what is trying to stop your breakthrough. Jesus came, did amazing miracles, signs and wonders. Three years, he raised a people. It impacted Peter. He taught Peter so much and it was time for Peter to step out. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. 
but I have prayed for you. That prayer was not a prayer begging God. No, it was a prayer to stop the enemy from stopping Peter. It was a, it was a prayer to stop what wanted to stop Peter. Sometimes you pray to stop what wants to stop you. You pray to stop what wants to stop your breakthrough. Jesus would have had to fail if Peter and the other disciples could not carry on what he came to do. He would have been a failure. So the enemy realizing I couldn't stop Jesus, but I'm going to stop that message from spreading. He came to bring about salvation of men, not to die a martyr. So I will keep that from happening. And he wanted to get Peter and through Peter get the disciples of Jesus. But Jesus said, Peter, I have prayed for you. So I am confident that you will fulfill this destiny because I have stopped what wanted to stop you. I don't know what is trying to stop this divinely divine appointment today. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are meeting your own Samuel. You are meeting Saul, you are meeting your Samuel. David, you are meeting your Samuel. Paul, you are meeting Ananias. Oh, hallelujah. You are meeting that divine appointment that begins a new level for you. And so right now, you pray this and you decree it. Let every obstacle to my divine appointments give way. In the name of Jesus. Let every obstacle to my divine appointment give way. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I speak now in the name of Jesus. Let every obstacle to your divine appointment in ministry, in marriage, in business, in your career, in your progress, in your life as a whole, in your family, in the name of Jesus, let every such hindrance or obstacle to your divine appointment cease now. Let it cease now. In the name of Jesus. Let it give way. Let it cease to exist. In the name of Jesus. Speak in tongues somebody. Speak in tongues someone. Mako pradiga mahande, makro pradiga la mahande, me creve dos contregele munde boshka, ma crevo non drege sida baia, ma creve non drege shediga, ma pradiga la baia, ma pradiga la baia, ma creve dos cotoria bala manke toza, mande clunz, clunz gandiga, proctegea broca shida, ma creve dus protega la mai, ma creve dus con praga liema. Ma crevo non drege sudo bosha, ma crevo lo sapataya, ma crevo lo sapataya, ma crevo lo sapataya, ma crevo lo socora dia, me crevo non si pradiga la mande, e cre non de cleduso pradaya, e le credo non si, me le vrusha capa, li cabo se telia mande, e cande le cruz volo diga by. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every obstacle to your divine appointment is giving way let every obstacle to your divine appointment give way let your divine appointments be manifested in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah glory be to God glory be to Jesus you receive that with a loud amen glory be to Jesus Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Before I go into the word, when I was preparing for this meeting, I just had this urge to 
talk about, about giving and sowing seeds. And I've told you we're no longer making apologies uh, uh, um, for every time the Spirit of God stares in our hearts to call for seeds and ask people to sow seeds. We're no longer making apologies. Number one, because nobody is coming to your house and saying, putting a gun to your head and saying you must give. Because you're giving out of revelation, your own understanding. You have the Holy Spirit with you. Secondly, no, no, the seeds are going into the work of the kingdom of God and touching lives and transforming life and planting churches and, and paying for school fees and changing lives generally. And so who wouldn't want to give to that? All right. And, and so, but thirdly, because oftentimes the spirit of God is working on something. And so th- there was, there was a, a, the scripture that we are very used to was quickened to me in a new way as the Holy Ghost began to deal with me about that. And if that revelation drops in your heart, then you act accordingly. You know, the Passion Translation of the very popular scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, that says God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you having all sufficiency in all things will abound to every good work. I love, and I came across the Passion Translation as the Holy Ghost was dealing with me Stirring my heart to do what we are doing right now before we go into the teaching of the word. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the Passion Translation reads this way. And I want you to understand this because it is a, a very interesting um, rendition of the actual Greek words. It says, Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. That just got to me. So God is ready to do something. He's ready to overwhelm. Do you know what it means to be overwhelmed? People get overwhelmed by circumstances that are negative and they cry. When you are overwhelmed, you oftentimes end up crying. Can you imagine being overwhelmed by grace? And not just one direction, every form of grace you need. Overwhelmed by it, that you actually break down crying. So he says, God is ready. Now, notice that word, God is ready. Why did he say God is ready? Instead of saying, God is overwhelming you. He said, God is ready. Why? Because he was talking, he was telling them about giving. But 7 says, let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving. All because God loves hilarious generosity. So he was telling them to give, and it was now it was that 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 call to give that he continued by saying, Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you. In other words, God is waiting. God is ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. So that you will have, continuing that scripture, more than enough of everything, every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. So God is ready. That's a key thing. And oftentimes God is saying, hey, you need to believe to receive these things. And one act of your believing is your willingness to give. I've I've shared this so many times. When somebody comes to you and says, can you please lend me a million uh, 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 naira? And you say, or a million dollars. And you say, well, I have savings, yes, but all my savings now amount to about $1.2 million. So I really can't share a million dollars with you. Because you have just $1.2 million. That's understandable. You can say, well, I'll give you $10,000 or I'll give you $50,000 because I have just $1.2 million. But the moment you get an alert on your phone that says $1 billion has been paid into your account, all of a sudden $1.1 million Given to that person is no longer an issue. Why? Because you believed an alert. You didn't go to see the money. You didn't ask the bank to show you the money. You believe that the bank told you that now you have one billion. And all of a sudden, you can give more because of what you believed. Believing that, we, that what God says and what God has said enables us to give. And so giving is simply an expression of faith. That's why God loves a cheerful giver. So the cheerful giver is cheerful about the harvest. He is confident of the harvest that he is cheerful in his giving. So God is excited about the cheerful giver, not because he just likes us laughing when we are giving. 
No, he's excited about a cheerful giver because he is love. He wants to see you receive. And he knows the one who is cheerful is the one who believes. And the one who believes is the one who will receive. So he likes the one who is believing. He likes the giving that comes from faith. And so he's ready. And he's just waiting for us to believe him and take what is ours. But then what I wanted to drop in your spirit before I, I, I share some other things with you today is this part. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. And God told me to share that this with you. Every one of us need to have the good thing. You see, look at that statement again. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. So the abundance overflowing is in the good thing you are doing. So we need to move from one good thing to another. We, we need to move from, if you, are, you must always have a good thing that you are in. He will cause you to overflow with abundance in the good thing you are doing. You must always have the good thing you are doing. You must always have the good thing you are doing. Are you, are you right now supporting a church plant somewhere? That's, that's a good thing. Are you right now sponsoring some people in school? That's a good thing. What is the good thing that you are in? Because it is in that good thing that the abundance is supplied. Never be outside of a good thing you are doing. Always have a church you are supporting, a ministry you are supporting, a, a the gospel you are sending out one way or the other consistently. You are in it. You didn't just breeze past it, drop something and move on. You need to have, there are some places and things that God will just tell you to sow a seed and move on. But you need to have what you are in. You know, you need to have the good thing you are in. I am in a good thing planting a church in Uganda. I am in a good thing leading a church in, in Nairobi here, leading many to Christ. And there are people who are not the pastors or leaders of this, these places that are in it with me. The Bible says the Lord gave the word, but great was the company of them that published it. So a great company are in that good work. And in that good work, they are receiving abundance. Stay in a good work. So today, as I continue to teach the details of, 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 of um, your, you have the opportunity to give. And the details are, are posted on the groups. You have the opportunity to give. And keep on doing it. The Holy Ghost is staring your heart. Give ridiculously, but give cheerfully and give in faith. Hallelujah. And stay in that good work. Make, in other words, make it consistent. You know, make plans to expand it. This is what you are in. And abundance comes in that good work. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts as we look into your word. We ask for words and thoughts from heaven to flow freely through me to your people. Let these words and thoughts multiply in our lives until there is manifestation and fruit. And let signs and wonders continue even in our lives as we listen to your word. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. We've been talking about the need to expand our minds and, and thinking. And I want to share something with you today that I think, I believe, will, um, will completely, completely, completely impact us in an unusual way. Um, turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 78. Psalm 78, verse 41. The Bible says, yeah, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. We're talking about expanding our minds. And I want to show you that how you think can limit God or empower God. As powerful as God is, your mental positioning and level is, the, is one of the greatest limitations that God can experience. He can't do more than how far you can see. He can't go further with you than how far you can see. He can't multiply you beyond what you can see. Look at this. It says, he's able to, the Bible tells us he's able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all, we can ask or think. He's able to, but he can't do so beyond what you can Imagine, beyond what you can see, he's able to, but he can't. 
Look at this. There they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Verse 42, Psalm 78. They remembered not his hand. That was how they limited him. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. And that's what I want to talk to you about in the few minutes I have remaining. About the, you see, remembrance is a function of the mind. Remembering what God has done. Remembering what God has done. In your life, in the lives of others, is one of the ways you expand your mind. What you choose to remember and what you choose to forget affects the state of your mind. A woman, for instance, who was treated badly by a man, Maybe they were going out and he cheated on her, stole from her, duped her, lied to her. That lady needs to forget that experience. Now, constantly remembering that becomes a state of mind that limits God. And everyone God brings into her life. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask for things. God, <coughs> excuse me, can bring her someone that is the complete opposite of the person she has experienced. But you know what usually happens? That mindset that is caused by not forgetting, that is caused by remembering. You see, what you choose to remember. And what you choose to forget affects everything. That mindset begins to attack the new relationship. The guy picks up his phone. He says, who are you talking to? Who are you chatting with? Now she's acting in ways, negating what God is doing and limiting God. Because she chose not to forget. We forget when we sowed and reaped. We forget when God showed up and we thought we were dead. And he showed up and bam, amazing things happen. And we forget that. But we choose to remember oftentimes when we sowed and didn't seem to reap. We seem to remember the things we shouldn't remember and forget the things we should remember. That was what their problem was. The Bible said they turned back and tempted God and this is what tempted means to vex in other words, frustrate. They frustrated God. God wanted to, but then he was, not, it wasn't like God was tempted to sin. The word there means to frustrate, to vex somebody. God wanted to bless, but he was frustrated. And, and it's used in the sense that you would say, don't try me, don't try me. Don't try me. No, we say that in Nigeria. Don't try me. In other words, don't frustrate me. Don't get me angry because you are put, putting things in front of me that are making things difficult for me. They tempted. They tried God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Why? They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Let's look at a few more scriptures. So Exodus 13 and verse 3, the Bible says, and Moses said unto the, the people, remember this day. Remember this day. They were leaving Egypt. And Moses told them, make sure you remember today. Take the time to recollect this over and over again. Ponder on what God is doing for you now. See, because if you don't, you will forget what he did. And limit him. Your mind will not be able to grasp what God wants to do in your life. Except you constantly meditate on what he has done in your life. And done in the lives of others around you. Remember this day in which, you came, in which ye came out of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. For by the strength of hand. Remember the scripture we just read. They remembered not his hand. For by the strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall, no unleavened, there shall no leavened bread be eaten. So, now, they had seen miracles 
They had seen the ten plagues. They were about to exit. And Moses said, remember all this. Remember how God brought you out. And listen, child, of God, that's what I want to talk to you about today. You need to take the time to meditate on what God has done for you. Let your mind capture when you, when you lost three billion in your bank and it was found out, God arranged for it to be restored. And now you, you want to do a project that needs three billion and you can't imagine where three billion can come from. But you lost three billion and God restored it. How can he not give three billion? Can you see that? Oh, hallelujah. Exodus 14 and verse 10. When Pharaoh drew near, this was, now we just read Exodus 13, right? Now this is Exodus 14. Child of God, please hear this. This is the next chapter. When Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid. They were just told in the chapter before. Remember the hand of God. Because they had seen the plagues that came by the hand of God. And Moses said, don't forget this. Because you're going to face things in in, in front of you that you need not to limit God with what you think is possible. So remember what he has done. So, and they were so afraid, and children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt us with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is, it, is not this the word that we te- te- told thee in Egypt? Saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. You know, when I was reading this, something crossed my mind. This was one chapter away. And I think about how our lives are in chapters. Some of you are in a new chapter of your life. You know, so there was a chapter before and there's a new chapter of your life. And in the chapter before, God did 10, 10, God did 10 amazing miracles, but you've forgotten. When we, when we move to a new chapter in our lives, we often act like it is the beginning of everything. Like God has never shown up in our lives before. But God has. And they moved from chapter 13 to chapter 14. One chapter later, they had forgotten what God had done. And I I think about how we also forget when we move to another chapter of our lives. We forget when we were building and the building. I remember when we were building the church in in, in Nigeria. And the building, uh, uh, people that, that did the roof were coming to come and arrest me with police because we were owing them. And between when they left their office and got to my my office, the bill was paid. God supplied the money and we paid them before they arrived. God supplied the money. And I'm thinking right now about the Ugandan church starting. It's another chapter of my life. I'm thinking right now about the churches God is calling us to plant all over the world. It's another chapter. But what about that chapter before? Can we remember what he did? If he could supply the the cost for a whole roof of a 1,000-seater church in one day, in hours, in minutes that it took for them to get to where I was, can he not supply the resources to build churches all over the earth? Remember, there are two ways that we remember. We remember, and we remember what God has done, and we remember things as they stay in our mind through two main ways. We're going to look at them in detail. But for now, let it be said that one way we remember is by constantly meditating. Constantly. Have times you just set apart and meditate on the Word of God. See what He did for people who have come before you. See what he did. Meditate on what he has done in your life. Take the time. God actually 
demanded that the children of Israel actually take the time. Think about this. God set aside days for them to, for the purpose of remembering only. Just for them to remember. God set aside days. I want you to think about this. Leviticus 23, 23. The Bible said, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, that ye shall, ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpet. A memorial. What's a memorial? That word memorial is a reminder, a remembrance, a recording. God required them to set aside days that they just spent remembering what God can do based on what he has done. Reminding themselves that there's nothing too big for God. There is nothing too big. So it happens through meditation. Spending time in the word of God. Spending time thinking. Controlling what goes into this mind. Spending time thinking of what God has done already. Instead of thinking about the problem. Another way we expand our minds and are able to remember what God has done is through relationships. Hanging out with people who constantly remind you. Hanging out with people. What I mean by constantly remind you is not that they're always talking about it and telling you God can do it. No. Just their lives. Just their testimonies. You know, some, you're hanging around somebody who is saying, oh, I just got a contract from NNPC for 15 billion naira. You're like, what? He reminds you, God can. God can. Hang around people who literally blow your mind. Constantly letting you know there is a life beyond where you are. Hanging around people like that. We're going to deal with this in detail. My time is up as we continue in this. I hope this blessed you. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you for grace to live out what we are learning in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining in. Join me again tomorrow as we continue on this series of breakthrough sessions that we have tagged Reframing Your World, Changing Situations. Have a wonderful day today, remembering that God loves you and that love is unconditional. Enjoy the rest of the day.